Ah, the mighty map note on. How few people understand how you work. It's right, today we're gonna talk about the map node on exactly how it works and how to use it to save a ton of node ons in your code. Let's go. So ultimately, why do we wanna use map node ons? Well, before I talked about marker node on setups, marker node on setups will normally save you like five to 20 node ons each. And that's because marker node ons will greatly simplify a couple of very valuable and very complicated setups that may only appear like one to four times in a level maybe. In contrast, each map node on doesn't give you quite a ridiculous save. It's only like one or two node on saves each, but you'll be using maps like 10 to 40 times in a level. So like it adds up fast. What will you do with all the node ons you saved from a map? Maybe you'll even spend them on a comment. <laughs> Why do I even bother? Today I'm going to explain how to best exploit the map node on to get the most mileage out of him. Well, what does a map node on do? Well, let's just say that his face is extremely literal. What happens is that when an input goes in, that input is scaled to a different value for the output. You bet I'm coming at you with a PowerPoint on this. In general, a map will use a linear relationship to map the input onto the output. So for example, here, a five goes in and a four comes out. The way to exploit a map is to use this linear relationship to do a wide variety of different mathematical manipulations that are very cheap because it's all done in one node on. All the magic for a map node on happens in its settings, where here you specify what the input range is and the output range. And then the program will figure out a line that maps this set of numbers into this set of numbers. Let me explain how that works. Let's say I do a linear map from zero to one to zero to four. These ranges are not equal in size, but they both start at zero. So zero goes in and zero goes out. But if one goes in, now four needs to come out. Since every number in the range needs to match up linearly, what this map does is it multiplies by four. And that's all it does. What if we want a different number? Well, if we map zero to one to zero to two, then this map node on will just take in whatever number and double it. In general, whenever you map zero to one to zero to some number, then you're multiplying by that number. So this map will just multiply my input by eight or by 57 or by 124, however I set this number. What if we do this in reverse? Let's map zero to four to zero to one. Zero still maps to zero, but now if four goes in, one comes out and we apply the same thing to everything in between linearly. That means that this map only divides the input by four. If we do zero to two to zero to one, now it just divides by two. So in general, if you do this sort of map, then whatever number is here will be the number that you're dividing by. So this map divides by eight, this map divides by 70, this map divides by 207. It's not rocket science. Just the ability to multiply or divide by a constant makes it so that you use map nodons super frequently when leading into a slider, hinge, moving box, rotating object, etc. This is so that you can scale up or down the speed, change the range of angles, or set coordinates for how far an object will be moving around. Before we were multiplying or dividing because the input and output ranges had a different width. But what if they have the exact same width? So here I'm mapping zero to one, two, four to five. This makes it so that zero maps to four and one maps to five, and then linearly everything else in between. So this map simply adds four to the input. Doing this in reverse, if I map three to four, two, zero to one, then three maps to zero, four maps to one, this map just subtracts by three. Now we know how to make the map do a very basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division by one specific number, all in one note on. Hey, wake up! Here's where it gets more interesting. Let's say I have this range of zero to one to negative one to zero. Just like before, the ranges are the same size, so we're just subtracting the input by one. But you notice this fancy little button over here that reverses the map. What happens when we click this button? This map no longer maps one to zero and zero to negative one. Now this nodon will map one to negative one and zero to zero. This means that we are mapping the upper bound of the input to the lower bound of the output. Therefore, this map nodon is identical to an inversion nodon. Of course, we can do multiple things at the same time. So I can map zero to one 
2, 0 to negative 90. And now this map will just take the input and multiply that by negative 90. This gives us multiplication or division by negative numbers. Remember, we can also combine multiplication and addition, where here I can map 0 to 1 to 90 to 180. I'll explain why this is all super useful shortly, just, just stay with me here. Focus on this map. Here we're mapping 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. No inversion, so this map does actually nothing. The input is equal to the output. If I go 0 to 2 to 0 to 2, no inversion, that also does the exact same amount of nothing. But now let's look at the range restriction feature, which unlocks the last major bit of math locked behind the math node on. This graph shows what happens when we map 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. All right, this is just the map that does times 1, input is equal to the output. What does the map do when it gets a 2? If range restriction is disabled, then the map node on will extrapolate this line forever. So if you input a 2, then the map node on will also output a 2. However, if we enable range restriction, then the output of the map is only allowed to be in that range of the output. So if it's 0 to 1 to 0 to 1, the output can only be between 0 and 1. And if you pass in any number bigger than 1, then that gets capped to 1. And if you pass any number smaller than 0 going negative, then that gets also capped to 0. This is the last mathematical operation called min or max. With range restriction disabled, 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 and 0 to 2 to 0 to 2 are actually the exact same map. But when you enable range restriction, now they are very, very different from each other. While the mathematical operation that you're doing in the middle is the same, you're capping it off at different values, which means that the output can be completely different. And this is extremely useful for logic. Let's say we go to the max. So 0 to 1000 to 0 to 1000 and assume we don't get any numbers bigger than 1000. Now this map node on will give you the output that's equal to the input, except if it's a negative number, just give me zero instead. To conclude the little PowerPoint segment, a map node on let basically lets you do whatever multiplication, addition, min or max operations that you might wanna do, define whatever line, and have all that magic happening in exactly one node on. Now let's exploit this guy to save mad node ons. The first obvious situation is to replace a multiplication or division by a constant. With what I showed you before, it's really easy to set up a map that just multiplies or divides by a constant. You just do that same setup. Now, a map nodon's number one call to fame is scaling between different inputs and outputs that aren't really on a similar scale. So, for example, every time you have a marker nodon, a marker nodon always takes in zero to one. But let's say I wanna feed in an angle instead and use that to move around the marker nodon. All right, this angle goes negative 180 to positive 180, which is nowhere near zero to one. So should I use a bunch of calculators to make it work out? Absolutely not. <laughs> well, how do I do all the math to figure out exactly what line maps between the input and output? Here's the beautiful thing. You don't need to. That's the computer's job. All you need to do to set up this range is look at what's the input range for the tilt controls. That's an angle between negative 180 and positive 180. Okay, what is the range for the marker node on? Zero to one. Okay, put that in and the computer will figure it out. Of course, if you want it to be sensitive to a smaller range of angles, I could always go negative 90 to positive 90, which gives me a similar result, but I'm mapping from a smaller range. So my input is being multiplied greater. Same thing with a stick node on. Stick node on goes negative one to positive one, marker node on goes zero to one. So I make my map to go negative one to one for the stick and zero to one for the marker. This is especially useful when you're working with angles. So negative one to one maps to negative 180 to positive 180. And now I can control this box on this hinge on a full 360 degrees. There are some nodons that you'll almost always find with a map. You can see in my landmaster level that every time I have a marker, very high probability you're gonna find a map going right into it. Every time you find a hinge, probably you're gonna have a map going into it. I move around the tank in my level using this free slider. I'm using a stick node on and counter node on to feed in the coordinates to go to. However, this number goes up way too fast. So I just use a map node on to change the speed. With this tilt controlled rocket, I'm similarly using very many map node ons to scale my speeds, my accelerations, the angles, everything. Here, this map node on actually works as a part of an if statement. In my aimbot level, the aimbot shoots out projectiles of different speeds. 
at a slow speed when you're very close and a very high speed when you're far. This comparison gives you a zero if you're close and a one if you're far, but I want to turn that into a launch speed. So what can I do? Well, I can use a map node on, so if I'm close, false is zero, so map that to 30. And if I'm very far, the check gives true is one, then that will give me a 60. So I'm using this map node on to turn this Boolean into an actual numerical value. How about a logical OR gate, where an OR gate passes zero if no input is going in, or a one if either input or both are going in. So you're adding them, but two also maps to one. This is the same as a map of zero to one to zero to one with range restriction enabled. Let's say that every time I press ZL, I want the game to give me a standard normal random variable. This is a variable that's on a bell curve. So here I have six RNG nodons that go from zero to 1000 and all six sum into this one map nodon. By central limit theorem, this is going to quickly approach a normal distribution and you can, you can check that. The problem is that I want something with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And what I'm adding has a standard deviation of 707 and a mean of 3000. So here just doing a little math, I divide by 707 by making 0 to 707 to a range that is only one wide and I subtract by number of standard deviations away from the mean. Now this button gives me standard normal random variables on command. So let's say I want to do a modulo operation. It's like getting the number that's left over as a remainder after division. So for example, 19 mod 10 is nine or three mod two is one. This is very useful for any sort of like looping thing in programming. And a map node on is going to help us make this happen. Let's say I want to make a little code block that does mod 10. Well, angle difference node on, it loops its values between negative 180 and positive 180. The problem is that I want mod 10 and not mod 360. To do this, I map 0 to 10, where 10 is the base of the modulo operation, and I map that to negative 180 to positive 180, which is the main operating range for angle difference node on. Then angle difference node on will loop that angle around that negative 180 to positive 180 degree range. And now the problem is I have an angle, so I need to bring it back to the original scale that I had before. To bring it back, I just do the opposite map, which maps negative 180 to positive 180 to zero to 10. And you see that the modulo operation works exactly as planned. Just to show you that 10 isn't special, here's mod four, where it's zero to four to the same range angle difference node on, and a map to zero to four. And you can see that I'm indeed taking this same number mod four. Let's say I want to take the floor of a number, which means take that number and round down. What I can do is divide the number by its absolute value, which gives me the sign of the number, then use a map node on to divide by negative two. So a negative number will give me positive 0.5 and a positive number will give me negative 0.5 which I can then add into a digitize function. And digitize of two will round this number to the nearest whole number. So now this floor function, I've defined it to round down towards zero, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, which may not be the most accurate definition of a floor, but it is more useful for my own code. We can also use map nodons to combine different Boolean inputs. So whether or not a button is pressed zero or one, combine all of that into a single number in base two. So here these maps are times 0.1, times 0.2, and times 0.4. They're all powers of two from the base. This combined variable can be read out using a marker node on. So here, for example, I can use this marker node on to check every possible different combination of these inputs that I've stored, depending on what buttons I press. And this is what that code looks like using the bare minimum of not and and nodons. We only say four nodons, but now the code is basically illegible. Except the god gamers in the audience probably already realized just looking at the code that two of these numbers are actually swapped with each other in the wrong positions. But don't worry, if this were your code, you wouldn't spend an hour debugging it. You'd immediately see what the problem is and fix it. Before I close up, I want to mention that map nodons are great, but they can also make it a little bit harder to understand your code because they can replace other mathematical functions and you don't necessarily know by looking at it what magic is contained inside of the map node on. For this reason, even though I can make a map node on that's actually identical to an inversion node on, I would never actually do this in code because it's very easy to see from a distance what an inversion node on does because it's an inversion node on. 
but you can't immediately see what's going on inside of a map nodon without actually opening it up. You can technically use map nodons to save from addition or subtraction calculators. So here I have whatever number plus one going into a box, but GBG already sums together inputs that go into a single port. So this plus calculator was never actually necessary. So for just the case of adding or subtracting by a constant, it's not worth using a map nodon. You don't save any nodons and it becomes a little bit harder to read your code. A map nodon's greatest strength is multiplication or division by a constant. Trust me, you will spam that feature constantly. However, if there is a number that you really want easy access to, to change a large amount of your code, or to be really prominent and obvious in your code, then it might still be worth it to use the more expensive constant and multiplier node on, because it's very easy to see what the value of this constant is and change it. This is why whenever I make a circular orbit, like an object that moves around in a circle, I will almost always use a constant node on and two multiplier node ons. Even though this costs one more node on in my code than using a pair of maps, I can very quickly see what the radius is for the circular orbit and change that radius for everything simultaneously. This is especially important if you have multipliers that are really far apart in your code, because if your code has like 20 different map node ons and you need to find the three different map nodons that multiply by your speed, then you have to go on a wild goose chase to go hunt down all those maps and make sure you didn't miss one. That said, it makes complete sense to spam map nodons whenever you know that the input and output range are not really going to be changing very much, and it's not a number that you're really planning on changing ever in the level. For example, this map defines the speed of my tank. But that speed isn't really like referenced anywhere else in my code. So I know that if I change the speed, I only need to change it here and I'm not going to go on a wild goose chase. So this division by 15 is completely fine. Again, I just don't want you to accidentally screw yourself like looking through your code for multiple instances of the same number being defined. One more thing is that I've been seeing this pattern a lot in people's levels lately where you'll have an extend marker node on with a bullseye to have like, you know, when this number goes up, you have like an offset, etc., and it goes up linearly. And I don't mean this as a shorthand, like just one marker and one bullseye, like this is the whole setup. Please stop doing this. This is just a map node on with extra steps. It's jankier, it's more expensive, it's less clear, and it's a whole lot harder for you to actually make it do exactly what you want it to do. Just stop it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you make really good use of the map node on. Map node on is amazing. You will save so many node ons with him. With that, happy building. If you enjoyed, feel free to like, subscribe, or not, whatever. Take care, dude. Bye.